June is here and you're wondering what stock should I buy now? Today I'm going to cover seven dividend stocks and they're really going to be focused on dividend growth investing and a couple DGIF stocks in here. Now if you're not familiar with DGIF we're just talking about dividend growth investing for fire that's total growth so stocks that have performed well both in the dividend and the share price and I've also got an income stock sprinkled in there and I have a bonus pick at the end. So this is going to be a rapid fire video seven stock picks plus a bonus pick let's dig in. Have you guys seen that new movie on Amazon? Amazon Prime it's called Air. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck and if you haven't seen that check it out. It's a great movie and it tells you the story of Nike and really the Jordan brand. So the first stock is Nike and I would classify this as a DJIF stock. You can see the 52 week range on this was $82.22. This is back in October of 2022. 52 week high was February 2nd, 2023. So it ran really hard in a short period, got to 131, had earnings and pulled back. So it's not a dirt cheap stock, but a very high quality company, strong balance sheet, strong shareholder return. It's a 30 PE ratio right now. It pays you a 1.292% dividend yield. This is a large cap, 160. $61.7 billion market cap. And you can see on the chart here, if you go back to November of 2021, this is $176 stock. And it's pulled back to a level here that's starting to get attractive. I'm gonna share price targets, really preferred targets for each stock as I go through. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell for notifications. This is the dividend stock video. I'm also gonna be doing a gross stock version of this, seven gross stocks to buy now for the month of June. And that's gonna come out on Saturday. So you can see over the past 52 weeks, it's down about 11.5%. And Nike has hit some snags when you think of EPS growth. A lot of that comes down to supply chain issues and I'm going to talk about that in a second and tell you why I think it might be coming on the other side here soon. Now of course with all these stocks if we go into recession they could go much lower and we have debt ceiling there's plenty of macro risk but we're trying to identify stocks that are really out of fashion and really buying against the grain instead of just going on the AI hype train and, and buying in FOMO. Let's find stocks that fit into a balanced barbell portfolio, some dividend stocks to give you some balance and diversity in a portfolio. So valuation wise, we talked about the PE ratio. The price to sales is about a 3.24. Price to book is 11.16. The peg ratio is a little bit high, it's 3.54. Now the PE for next year's estimate is a 26.2. And I think that Nike could actually beat estimates when you think of 2024. And the reason I say that, this is from the most recent earnings call. This is a transcript. We've made tremendous progress on inventory and two quarters ago you'll recall that we made clear set goals and decisive actions in response to changing conditions in the supply chain and the marketplace so nike has gone through volatility and supply chain disruptions and they're really starting to come out on the other side of it i think that's going to happen here in 2024 we're increasingly confident that we're going to exit fiscal year 23 with healthy inventory levels across the marketplace across channels in the marketplace i mentioned in my prepared remarks that within the financial parameters that we set two quarters ago we're going to exit it with even leaner inventory than we anticipated giving the momentum that we're seeing so this is talking about impacts on gross margin and it says here over the past two years there's been elevated ocean freight and logistics and then the promotions required to move through excess and early arriving inventory we expect that those transitory headwinds will begin to recover in fiscal year 2024 and i'll give specific guidance about how much next quarter so there's a little bit of uncertainty here i think if you start buying the stock dollar cost averaging if you're paying you're thinking long term three four five years this is probably an opportunity to buy but it's not going to recover overnight i like this stock if it gets to a hundred dollars or less dollar cost average when we say dollar cost average of dca it just means don't buy it all at once the next stock is qualcomm and their most recent earnings were pretty solid 9.3 billion dollars in revenue dollar 52 in gap eps and you can see some of the other numbers here on your screen we're just going to go through this quick rapid fire so some highlights handset 6.1 billion Automotive, 447 million. Internet of Things, 1.4 billion. Now, where I think there's a lot of opportunity with Qualcomm is in automotive. We've talked a lot on the channel and in the conference series about really this the TAM, the total addressable market for electric vehicles and that compound annual growth rate we're gonna see over the next decade. So I've been buying several different stocks that are going to participate in that rally, in that secular growth trend. And I think Qualcomm could be one of those and it's not that expensive. We'll talk about valuation here in a second. Now, Qualcomm is telling us that their total addressable market for all segments, so mobile, auto, 
auto and internet of things is $700 billion over the next decade. And of course, that's not the SAM. They're not gonna get all that, but there's a lot of money to be made, which is why I'm so bullish on semiconductors. And speaking of semiconductors, next week, I'm gonna release a 50 minute deep dive on the semiconductor industry. Now, this is something that we did in the Fired Up Wealth Conference, and it's gonna share tons of information. If you watch that video, you're gonna have a much better understanding of the semiconductor industry, as well as the top stocks to be buying to benefit from these secular tailwinds over the next decade. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, click that bell for notifications. You will not wanna miss that one. So this is really talking about their tech roadmap. You got handsets, automotive, consumer internet of things, industrial internet of things, and then edge networking. So this is a really big play for 5G and internet of things, but they also consider themselves a leader in edge AI. And now a lot of these semiconductor stocks have run very hard off the AI hype train. Qualcomm hasn't really participated. Develop wants with freedom to move across virtually all of our products in tiers. And this is where I think there could be a lot of potential with Qualcomm. When you think of just automotive, not just electric vehicles, but automotive in general. So enabling the car of the future, and you can see on your screen all the different, we talk about semiconductors, instead of just a handful of semiconductors in a car today, there's gonna be hundreds and hundreds of semiconductors in future cars, and really even thousands of chips in cars. In fact, if you look at your screen here, just today, an average modern car is between 1,400 400 and 1,500 semiconductor chips. Some have as many as 3,000. Imagine what that looks like in the future. So the Snapdragon Digital Chassis, a comprehensive digital platform for automotive, car to cloud, cockpit platform, ride platform, auto connectivity platform, and $30 billion in design win pipeline. Now we mentioned earlier that automotive was just $447 million in this most recent quarter. So $30 billion is a pretty big jump. So it's gonna take time for that pipeline to come to fruition and actually see that money, that revenue, but it's gonna come. And I think it's gonna grow even more. So real quick valuation and price target where I'd be looking at it. This is a 12 PE ratio, 2.82% dividend yield. It's a large cap, $126 billion. The 52 week low was just May 25th at 147. If you recall last month for the month of May, we did top stocks to buy. This was on there and we said we like it at $105 or less DCA. Well, now it's $114 you would have made a nice little return. You can see the 52 week high though is July 22nd, 2022 and it's $156. So 114 is still pretty far away from that 52 week high. And it's not an expensive stock at a 12 PE ratio, plus that 2.8% dividend yield to boot. So again, last month we said $105 or less DCA. Of course, now it's 114. I, I really prefer 110 or less, but even at $114, it's not a terrible buy here. But there could be some pullbacks and volatility. I think right now the market's wanting to go higher and it's really hard to time these and, and really know when to buy. So if you're comfortable with the valuation where it's at, it's probably not a bad buy now. I just wouldn't buy it all at once. I would dollar cost average. Okay, so I covered a consumer discretionary stock, a semiconductor stock. Let's mix it up with some real estate. This is a real estate investment trust. It's VICI Properties. Now this company owns 49 dynamic gaming destinations and four championship golf courses diversified across the United States. Now we don't have a ton of time to go into detail, but here are some investment highlights to consider and you can certainly pause your screen. So 50 properties, 11 tenants, and significant scale and access to capital. And here's their rent roll over time. And here's the money slide. It really shows you all the different properties they own. It's an impressive portfolio. So not just Las Vegas, but Lake Tahoe, all the way in New York, down in New Orleans, all over the place. So generally I call real estate investment trusts, I call them income stocks, because you're really holding them for the income for the dividend yield. And this does pay over a 5% dividend. You don't really pay attention to the PE so much when you, when you look at real estate investment trusts, but this is a 5% dividend. It's a solid income stock. If I were in my end game portfolio that I talk about all the time, this is definitely one of the stocks that I'd consider owning. And the nice thing about it, you know, the 52 week range was back June 14th, 2022. So it's been a year and it's just $3, $4 more than it was a year ago. So that 52 week low is 27.75, the high 35.69. I like this stock right here at $31. I prefer it 30 or less DCA. So next I've talked about this stock many times on the channel. It's one of my favorite DJIF stocks. It's Tractor Supply Company, TSCO. The thing about Tractor Supply is it's mostly in rural areas and it's in communities where they don't really have a lot of options. And so I think with, when you think of Wall Street analysts in general, they probably just don't have a good sense of really what that looks like if they're in Manhattan or whatever. And when you think about the population, there's you know, millions of people that live in rural areas. So you think of a small town that just has you know grocery store, 
a town pump, and they might have a tractor supply. Well, they're not gonna drive 50 or 100 miles to go to a bigger town. They're gonna buy a lot of stuff at tractor supply. And so I really think it makes this a little bit more recession proof than some of those other brick and mortar type retailers. Because a lot of what they sell, the people don't have much choice. And I'm gonna show you some stats here that will probably open your eyes to that. So when you look at net sales for the end of 2022, 50% livestock and pets. Well, you're gonna feed your pets and your livestock probably regardless of the situation, unless times are really, really bad. Seasonal gift and toy products, 21%. That could have some seasonality, some cyclicality. Hardware, tools, and truck. So maybe some cyclicality here too, but generally speaking, if you need tools, and you need to work on your truck or your tractor or whatever, you're probably gonna buy them. It's just a necessity for business. Clothing and footwear, it's only 7%. Those are kind of nice to have. So, you know, when people wanna buy some boots for work, a shirt, whatever, they sell that and they don't have to drive 100 miles to get it. So it's just some additional revenue and that will have some ups and downs. And then agriculture is about 3%. And this author agrees, you know, 50% of the sales come from livestock and pet. This spending is not discretionary. In fact, someone who owns livestock and pets can't just stop nurturing them because of a recession. And that is a critical fact when you're evaluating this company, when you're trying to analyze tractor supply. And coming from a, a rural area myself, I understand this business very well. If you're from a larger city, it might not make as much sense. Okay, tractor supply, trading right now at $206.47. The 52-week low, $181.40 on September 30th, 2022. The 52-week high, April 21st, 2023. So like a lot of these stocks, it ripped from the bottom, ran to all-time highs, and then made a pullback. So it's trading right now at a 21.5 AP ratio. Now I could argue that this deserves a premium. It's a quality company. It provides tremendous shareholder value. They have a proven track record and it's really a winner that's just gonna keep winning. And if, when I think of brick and mortar retailers, there's really not such a thing as a moat, but this has the closest thing to it because a lot of the locations they have, there's really no competition. So this is a mid cap, it's about $23 billion. And you can see the growth has been very strong. So price to sales ratio, 1.6, not not bad. Price to book is 12, but you look at PE next year's estimate, 18.6. So I like this stock right here, but I prefer $200 or less. And I think there's a chance you might see this stock between $190 and $200. For me personally, if you're talking about a five-year long-term investment, under $200 is a pound the table moment for me. So check out Tractor Supply, ticker is TSCO. The next stock is Avi. This is a stock I bought in the 60s. My yield on cost, I think is something like 9%. So I'm holding this long. It's really trading at 52 week lows. June 1st, 2023, it got down today to $131.10. Right now it's at 133.64. The 52 week high was $168. That was a little bit ahead of itself. And so you say, well, 32 PE ratio, that is pretty high. But if you look at historically, it's not so bad. And then that dividend yield is very strong. And this is why a lot of people like to own the stock. 4.29% dividend yield. So this could really classify, it's a DGI slash income type hybrid stock. It's a mega cap, $243 billion. So this is another one of those stocks that really have had some mixed results. And you can see some pretty dramatic EPS declines here. And that's part of the reason, of course, why the stock is selling off. So that price to sales is 4.3, price to book pretty high, 18.3. But PE ratio based on next year's estimate is 12.5. Now, anytime you're buying a stock like this, the pipeline is gonna be very important. Now, biotech and pharmaceuticals, as you know, if you follow me for a while, it's not my forte by any means. But what I can tell you from the research I've done, from the conversations I've had with people that are experts in the industry, you know, Abby does have a strong pipeline. You can see in phase one, there's a long list, phase two, phase three. This is what you wanna see if you're investing in a company like Abby. So I don't think the company is going to go anywhere. And really, if you're buying it, you're focused on the yield. But at the same time, if you can buy a stock that's, you know, kind of beat down and the, the, the share price recovers, you're going to make a nice return on the, on the share price as well. And I always like to focus on yield on cost. If you're trying to invest for a long time and you're going to hold this company for many years, you can get a tremendous yield on cost. So the RSI is oversold right now on Abby. It could see a little bit more pressure. It could bottom any time, but I think $120 to $125 is possible looking at the charts. I prefer $125 or less, but even $135 or less, if you're buying it for the dividend and thinking long term, it's probably not a bad buy. But for me, the sweet spot, is going to be 120 to 125 dollars if it gets that low that's where i would target it so this list so far has been very diversified i still have two more stock picks and a bonus pick now before i go on i need to announce this video is sponsored by the motley fool if you'd like to see the 10 best stocks to buy now visit fool.com forward slash fired up wealth
A reminder, Motley Fool doesn't tell me what to make, what stocks to cover, what to tell you guys. They're a great partner. Check those guys out. You can also join our private community, Patreon Discord, by visiting patreon.com forward slash fired up wealth. And a reminder, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, click that bell for notifications. I'm going to be dropping another video like this focused on growth stocks on Saturday in two days. And if this video is helpful, please drop me a like and a comment. I appreciate you. So next I want to cover an industrial stock. And what's exciting about this, number one, it's not a very expensive stock. It's a sleep well at night type of a, a company. You know that it's going to be around for a long time. It's been around since the 1800s. And when you think of the evolution of deer, you know, production systems, technology stack, you know, technology stack, just a couple of years ago, they hired their first CTO, chief technology officer, and they've got life cycle solutions. So this company is really focused more on electric vehicles in the future, autonomous. You can buy electric mowers right now. There's several different products that are becoming out, you know, everything from autonomous tractors and combines and drones. They're already doing a lot, but there's going to be a ton of advancements coming in the near future. And I think it's going to probably stimulate some growth. It's going to encourage more farmers to upgrade their machinery. And the reason that this stock is down, you think of commodity prices. When commodity prices are high, of course, you're going to make more profit as a farmer. And in theory, you're going to have more cash, disposable income to buy more machinery. When times are tough, commodity prices are way down this year. Stocks like this are going to get thrown out. And the reason for that, the theory is that, you know, they're not making as much on the commodities, they're not making as much on their grain and so on. And so they're not going to have as much money to spend on new equipment. Plus it is cyclical because if just like with computers, you think of the PC market with Microsoft and others, if you upgrade a computer, you're not going to do it for a few years. And with machinery, like million dollar, you know, combines, you're not going to replace that every couple of years. But Deer is very diversified, you know, production and precision ag, small ag and turf, construction and forestry. And really looking at that tech stack is what makes me excited about it. So this is a nice DJIF type stock, you know, looking at autonomy, automation, machine IQ, and so on. Everything from the hard we're in the software. And so there's actually going to be recurring revenue in some of these components, like a software component, which is going to be you know, new for this company. It's been around since the 1800s and it's really pivoting and involving more into a tech company. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not a technology company per se. It's an industrials company, but the transformation at Deere over the last couple of years and what I see in the future, I think this stock will be worth a lot more. And at a very minimum, the, the stock's doing just fine without advanced technology. You know, it's got a solid balance sheet, great shareholder returns and dividends, dividend growth. So they're constantly evolving this tech stack. And you can see some of the acquisitions they've made since 1999. You know, Bear Flag Robotics was a big one here for autonomous solutions, autonomous tractor solutions, connectivity, and so on. I mean, so you're going to see electric tractors and combines. You're going to see autonomous versions. This is going to be exciting stuff over the next 5, 10 years. Okay, so Deer, 11.6 P ratio. Now that's not expensive, but historically it just doesn't trade at a premium valuation. I think that it should based on future growth growth prospects. And is there some speculation baked into that? But I think that this should be more like a 15 PE ratio. The dividend yield right now is about a 1.45%. The 52 week low was 283.81 back July 6, 2022. 52 week high was actually November 23rd. So when most tech stocks were selling off just November of 2022, stocks like this were being bought. So you've got that rotation in the market all the time. Now people are buying tech stocks, chasing AI stocks. They're not buying stocks like Deer as much. With that said, it's still holding up about 300 Fifty dollars. It's three hundred fifty-three dollars right now. So I like the stock right here. I prefer the stock below three hundred fifty dollars. And that might not happen. It could bottom before then. I also see in a chart a possibility of three thirty-five. And I think if it gets that three thirty-five level, that's a pretty strong opportunity. It certainly could go lower than that, but three thirty-five would be great. So I want to throw a financial stock in here to really round out these seven stock picks very well. Bank of America. This is trading at an eight point six seven PE ratio. Of course, banks don't really trade at high PE ratios. We we'll look at price to book here in a second. Dividend yields at 3.19%, mega cap $219 billion. The 52 week low was 2632 and it's trading at 2788. And the 52 week high was 3860. So I like this stock, you know, $27 or less. I see a possibility that it could get 25 or under, and I think that'd be a, a pretty good opportunity at that level. So you can see Bank of America is down 25% over the past 52 weeks. So price to sales ratio 1.7, price to book 0.88. Anytime a bank, a high quality bank, is under one price to book, generally it's not a terrible buy. And the PE based on next year's estimate, 8.3. So of course there, there are risks with banking right now, but if you look at JP Morgan and Bank of America, those are the two largest banks. I, I don't think that these banks are gonna go anywhere. So for me personally, I don't have a whole lot 
lot of problem with Bank of America. I own it in both portfolios, my, my main portfolio. I also own it in the Fired Up Wealth community portfolio. So one quick bonus pick here. Now I've covered this on the channel before. You can check out a video that does a deeper dive in this and shows you all different holdings. But if you're trying to diversify and you don't really know what stocks, individual stocks to buy, a great way to play it is an ETF. And this ETF, what's nice is it doesn't have a ton of technology really in it at all. So it, it helps really hedge, diversify a portfolio, especially if you're tech heavy. This is SCHD and you can see it has stocks like Pepsi, Coke, Merck, Verizon, Chevron, Home Depot, Abbey. Some of the stocks we even covered today are in here. So go check that video out. Also, don't leave quite yet. As a bonus for Patreon Discord members, if you're an elite or above, I'm gonna be posting 10 more dividend stock ideas in Discord. If you wanna see those and you're not in our Patreon Discord, join elite or higher, you can go to patreon.com forward slash fired up wealth for 10 additional dividend stock picks. I hope this was helpful. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, click that bell for notifications, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.